what did we look at yesterday again? We looked at a bunch of different shapes, but we wanted to find one thing for all of the shapes. What was it? Surface area. Surface area? The shapes that we were particularly looking at, they were all prisms. Do you remember that? Yeah? Now, for prisms, we said, you've got a cross section, it's always the same, but not only is it always the same, they're always going to be like squares, or rectangles, or triangles. They're all going to be, what are they? All, they start with P, what are all those shapes? Straight edges, all that kind of thing. Polygons, Polygons fantastic. And we put that in our definition, didn't we? Okay? But today we're going to look at a shape which still has consistent cross section, but, whoopsie daisy does not have a polygon as its cross-section. The shape we're going to look at is a cylinder. Okay? Now, you should draw one of these. Um, a cylinder is a very simple shape. And you can see, just like before, if I slice it across ways here, uh, every time you're going to get the same cross-section, namely a... Fantastic. Okay? So you can see it on the end. Okay. Now, if I want to work out the surface area of this thing that wraps all the way around, so basically that's, well, how much paper did I use to make this thing? Does that make sense? Okay, so I want you to think for a second. Draw a cylinder for yourself. Make sure it's a decent size. While you do that, I'm going to make some space on the board. And I want you to think about how you would do that. How would you work out how much paper I used? Okay, so hopefully you've drawn a, um, a quick and dirty cylinder for yourself there. There's mine. Would someone like to offer a suggestion? How can I work out the surface area? Yeah, Ryan. Uh, so you can get the area of the two circles when you're in pi r squared. Okay, so I've got the top and the bottom, right? And we know the area of a circle. Each one of those is going to be pi r squared. We've done that before. Okay, so pi r squared is the area of a circle. You got two of them. Okay, now someone else. Can someone else pick up and tell me what then do we need to add on to that to get the whole thing? Yes, Sarah. Uh, times the height. Okay, so I'm, I've got this height here, right? Now just pause through it. The height's obviously very important. The taller the thing is, the bigger the surface area will be. So this height matters to me. If I take that pi r squared and I multiply by height, I'll get something important, but it won't be surface area, it'll be something else. Does anyone know what we will get? Yeah, Jaden. I'm going to get volume, okay? Now we'll work out, we'll look at volume later on. So volume is important. At the moment, I want to find something else. So can someone else give me another idea? Leo. Okay, if I want surface area, what shall I do? Ah, okay, so hey, put your hands there for a second. This will be a lot easier. If we could actually just work out what is happening with this thing, okay? Now we've dealt with the, um, the top and the bottom, okay? So I'm going to get rid of them for a second. So don't feel too precious about this. It's a pretty ugly looking cylinder anyway. Okay? Now, once you take off your top <coughs> mark, get ready to catch. There you go. Once you take off your top, Then you take off your bottom. I want you to think for a second, as I'm doing this and as you're doing it in your mind, what gets left behind? And not just like how big is it, but specifically what kind of thing gets left behind? Okay, get ready to catch, Mark. Okay, there's my two lots of pi r squared. So then I got this guy. Now what is this? Rectangle. Ah, so before I made it into the curvy part of a cylinder, before I did that, it was just a rectangle. Very simple shape, okay? Now, what I'd like you to have, just like I've got on my board, but out of red paper, on the side here, what I'd like you to draw, just like I do, is a net of a cylinder. It's a bit awkward because it's a curved thing, so it doesn't have like nice neat edges that fit together. However, Let's put this guy here. Here is our net. 
And you remember what a net is, it's that surface on the outside if you unfold everything. Okay. So, circle one, circle two, and then you've got this rectangle. How do you find the dimensions, or rather the area, of a rectangle? Right. Height, height, yeah, fantastic. All you need to know is how tall is the thing and how wide is the thing. Okay. Now I already know how tall it is. Uh, Sarah mentioned that before, that's the height, right? Well, this width across here, do you remember? It used to be this thing, right? Do you remember that? That's what it used to be and then I unfolded it, okay? So when you look at it like this, what's that in relation to my shape? That's the circumference along the bottom. Very good. So, what you need to do, in addition to your height, what you need is this around distance. What's circumference again? How do I find that? Pi two, two pi r. r. Two pi r. That was pretty good. Okay. Now, if you're like me, you find these two formulas, which both have to do with circles, and both have exactly the same letters and numbers, you find them easy to confuse. Okay. Now, how can you, does anyone give me any tips? How can I remember that this one is area and this one's circumference rather than the other way around? Any suggestions? The square. A square. What square are you talking about? I don't see any squares in the middle. Ah, okay. So that thing there, that's square, right? What's this for again? It's area, right? Can someone give me an example? What kind of units might you use to measure area? What kind of units. We just did some areas, right? Centimeter squared, meter squared, kilometer squared, okay? They're all things being squared, as opposed to a circumference. A circumference is not something squared. If you had centimeters squared for your area, what would you do your circumference in? Centimeters, right? So what I want you to pay attention to is the dimension of what you're doing, right? A circumference is a one-dimensional quantity. It's just a line. It's just going around. So you get one dimension here. An area up here is two-dimensional, which, by the way, just for a second, put your pens down for a minute. Last exercise, we were looking at surface area, and you had to do cross-sections over and over again. Every time you were doing a formula for the area of a face, right? Lots and lots of times. Triangles, rectangles, trapeziums. I want you to think about those formulas, right? Triangles, a half base height. What's the area square? It's uh, whatever, S side squared. Area of a rectangle? Length times breadth. Um, even the area of a trapezium. Do you notice? Just have a look at every single one of those formulas. And you can think of more if you like, like a kite or something like that. Do you notice every single one, you're always multiplying two lengths together. Did you notice that? Every single time, just like here, just this time it's R by itself. Okay? You've got a two-dimensional quantity, you're going to be multiplying two numbers. If you had three numbers, like Sarah was suggesting before, R and then R and then H again, that's three numbers. So that gives you volume because volume is about three dimensions. Does that make sense? Okay. They aren't just random. Okay, 2 pi r all the way around. It's h pi. So you've already worked out the area of each of your circles. What's the area of the curved part, the rectangle? Yeah, Jane. 2 pi r. Fantastic. There is the width and there is the height. So therefore, all I need to do is put everything together. Therefore, total surface area equals 2 pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. It's actually nice and neat and memorable. It's hard to get wrong because it's so close to itself, right? That's a surface area cylinder, okay? Now, I will point out this is for a closed cylinder where you've got a top and a bottom. Sometimes you'll have a look at the questions that you're going to encounter shortly. You'll have them where they ask you to take the top off or they just want the curvy part. It doesn't even have a top and a bottom. It might be like a, um, like a toilet roll, okay? It doesn't have ends, it's not closed, it's, it's open, okay? So pay attention to what kind of shape you've got, how it's related to a cylinder, and then take the bits and pieces you need. For instance, if it was a cup, right? So the cup's got a bottom, but it doesn't have a top because otherwise it wouldn't be very useful as a cup, right? So what's the surface area? On, on the outside, it's going to be pi r squared plus 2 pi r h. That's it. Right? Um, if it was the toilet roll, right? You don't have a top or a bottom. You've just got the rectangular part. So it's just going to be 2 pi r h. Does that make sense? So you just take the bits and pieces that you need, depending on what kind of shape you have. 